Hey guys, welcome back to the Thinkorswim tutorial series. Today we're going to cover the scan tab and specifically the stock hacker. Now I think the best practice for actually learning how to use the scan tab is creating one ourselves. So let's go ahead and jump right into it by clicking on the scan tab at the top of our page. From the scan tab, let's go ahead and make sure we're on the stock hacker for today. In later videos, we will talk about the option hacker and spread hacker, but the stock hacker is designed to actually find underlying stocks themselves rather than the options contracts. Now that we've made sure we are on the stock hacker, you can see a couple of the filters I've used in the past. But since we want to practice this in this video, let's go ahead and delete all of these out of here by clicking on the little X buttons on the far right hand side of the page. Now that they're all deleted, we can see we're completely blank and from here we can add a filter. Now once we click on this add a filter button, you can see all of the different filter options we have. That's going to include stock filters, option filters, fundamentals, and study filters. Now stock filters are going to be things like last traded price, bid ask, uh, bid ask size, market cap, that kind of stuff. Option filters are going to be things like delta, gamma, theta, vega, percent in the money, percent out of the money, things that will help you find individual options contracts later down the line. Fundamental filters are going to be things like price to book ratio, price to earnings, dead income, that kind of stuff. And the one that's a little bit tricky for first time users is going to be the study filters. And that's probably where we'll spend a little bit more time in this video is how to create those study filters. Now, I will tell you before you actually throw a study filter on here, you do need to know what studies you're actually going to use. So I recommend first find the studies that you find helpful that you use in your trading before coming over here to the scan tab and trying to throw a study filter in here. Now, let's just go ahead and jump into it by clicking on the stock filter button. From there, we're going to start creating our actual scanner. Now, in this example, we're going to look for stocks that trade between $10 and $500 are fairly liquid underlying. So have traded over a million shares so far today have a market cap of over $500 million because we want to make sure these companies are actually worth something. And once we dive into stuff like study filters, we're going to look for stocks that are oversold on the RSI. So anything less than 30. And we're looking for stocks that are currently above their 21 day simple moving average. So to do that, we're going to start with the last traded price first. So we're going to come over here to where it says ask, which is this default. We're going to scroll down until we find last. Go ahead and click on that. And remember, we said stocks between $10 and $500. So we'll go ahead and throw that in here. From there, we said we wanted to look for liquid underlying. So we're going to go ahead and click on add a filter, stock filter, come on back over to ask size, scroll all the way down to the bottom, look for volume. And from there, we're going to go ahead and throw in 1 million shares. And we'll go ahead and leave the max box on the right blank. Next, we're going to go ahead and add market cap, which is another stock filter. Come on over to the drop down menu again, scroll down until we see market cap. And I think we said we were going to look for stocks over 500 million. Now that's just a few simple examples of the kind of stock filters you can add. Let's go ahead and click on that drop down menu and see some of the other stuff. Things like the low for the day, uh, market maker move, net change for the day. And if we scroll down, we can see things like dividend yield and percent change. So just know there are quite a few different filters you can use inside of here. Just is going to take some time to find those things you're actually looking for. Next, we're going to go ahead and jump over to the study filter. So come on up here to add a filter, go on down to study filter and click on that. Now on the left hand side, we can't see the default that gets thrown in there, which is really just alphabetical order, the first study. What we're going to do is go ahead and click on that. And in this case, remember, we said we were looking for RSI, which is going to show up in our popular studies. And we're going to go ahead and click on RSI scan. And in this case, we're looking for bullish indicators. So we're looking for stocks that are currently less than 30. So we'll go ahead and adjust that on here or oversold on the RSI. Next, we're going to go ahead and click on add a filter again. We're going to go down to study filters. We're going to come on over to ADX crossover, which is again, just the default. Now, in this case, we said we were looking for stocks that are currently above their 21 day simple moving average. And this is going to be a little bit more tricky to create. So what we're going to do is actually go down to custom. Once we click on that, we're actually going to get the condition orders window up and we're going to see ADX crossover is again in there as our default. And we're always going to have to delete that out first and foremost. Once we get it deleted, we're going to come down here to add a condition. And from here, we're going to say price, because remember, we were saying the current stock price is above the 21 day. So go ahead and click on price, go to close, which is the last traded price. Come on over to is greater than. We're going to select a condition again. We're going to go to study. We're going to type in simple for simple moving average. Go ahead and click on it. And remember, we need to change this nine to a 21 for 21 day. So go ahead and type in 21 in here. And from there, we're going to go ahead and hit save. 
Now, before we can go ahead and finalize that by clicking on OK, what we need to do is come up here to aggregation period and make sure we've got it on the right time frame. Now, right now we have it on D for day, which is exactly what we wanted. Remember, 21 day simple moving average. If you were to click on this and change it to something like one minute or two minute, you are changing the aggregation period entirely. So let's say you did a one minute and it was 21 as the length. That would mean 21 minutes. Now that might be something useful for you day traders out there. This is something you will need to adjust if you're trying to change those time frames or the charts that you're you're referencing when you're creating these scans. But for right now, we have it on exactly what we wanted, D for day. So we're going to go ahead and leave that and click OK on the bottom right hand corner. Now we can see all of the filters we currently have set up. And remember from the very beginning, we said we wanted to look for companies that traded between $10 and $500. We're fairly liquid stock, so had over a million shares traded so far today. Had market caps over $500 million. We're currently oversold on the RSI, so less than 30 in this case. And the current price of the stock was above the 21-day simple moving average. Now that we have everything set that we're looking for, all we would have to do next is click on scan this big green button in the bottom right. Now, full disclosure, you're going to see no matching results symbols on my screen right now. In your case, if you're doing this during regular market hours, you will have a lot of results pop up because this is a fairly simple study that we threw in here. But for me, I am filming this on a Sunday, so I'm not going to have any results pop up quite yet. But I definitely recommend you practice this, get a feel for it, try and throw in some scan filters and see what kind of results you come up with. Now, some other things you can adjust on this page are these column headers up here at the top where it currently says symbol, description, last, and change, that kind of stuff. All of that can be edited on the far right hand side of the page by clicking on this little gear icon. From there, you're going to go ahead and click on customize, and you're going to see all of the current tabs we have on the far right hand side. From there, you could move them around, you could remove things that you currently have on there, or you could add stuff from the left-hand side over to the right. Now, the reason you might do this is if you're looking for specific things. This filter we created might come up with 50 results, and you may want to sort those in ascending or descending order depending on certain other criteria. Now, for example, me as an options trader, I'm going to be sorting it by IV percentile or IV rank in this case, looking for those stocks with the highest IV rank first. So I would look in this lookup column on the left, search for IV rank, add it onto my list. And once I click on the column, once it's in here, it'll sort it in ascending order. So I see those companies with the highest volatility first. Now, another way that you could sort these results is by using one of the columns we already have here, either net change or percent change. Once we've got some results down here in this list, we could click on one of these and it would arrange the stocks in our list by ascending or descending order from those biggest movers to the smallest movers first. And some other ways we could refine this scan filter results is up here with these tabs at the top. Right now it's saying we're scanning in all symbols. So literally anything that meets our criteria will show up in this list. But let's say we were planning on trading options and we wanted to make sure the stocks that showed up on this list actually has options attached to them. So what we could do is click on scan in all symbols Come on down to category and go to all optionable. And let's say we also didn't want to trade any real estate companies. So mainly REITs. What we could also do is say exclude. We could say buy industry in this case. We could come down to real estate and we could say select all real estate. So now our scanner right now is saying we're looking for companies that trade between $10 and $500, have traded over 1 million shares so far today, have a market cap of $500 million or more, are currently oversold on the RSI, and the price of the stock is above the 21 day simple moving average. Now, once you've actually created the scanner, set it all up the way that you like it, what we wanna make sure we do is save it. Now, the way that you save it is come up here to the three little lines in the middle, go ahead and click on that and say save scan query. Now, in this case, we've already created one called test one. We're gonna keep it named that, and we're just gonna hit save to override it and click okay. Now that we've saved it, we can actually do something very cool with scanners that we've saved in the past. We can throw them in as watch lists on the left-hand side panel of our screen. This means we no longer have to come to the scan tab every time we want to see what results have popped up from this scanner. We can just look on the left hand side and every three to four minutes, this watch list on the left will update itself. So what we're going to do is open up watch list here and click on high IV, the name of this current watch list coming up to personal, which is where all of the watch lists we've created are. And we're going to see one called test one, which is the one we just saved with a little purple circle next to it. Now that purple circle means it's a dynamic watch list. It's constantly updating itself. Now, again, the market is closed right now, so we're not gonna have any results pop up, but here is where we would see our scan results. And every three to four minutes, remember it is updating itself. So if a company now meets our criteria, it would show up on this list. And if an old company no longer met the results, it would fall off this list. Again, this is just gonna save you a lot of time going forward. You don't have to come to the scan tab every single time. You can just keep your watch list on the left-hand side open 
And ideally, as soon as a company shows up there, it meets all of your buy criteria or all of your sell criteria, depending on which way you're trying to trade it, which will hopefully make it so you can go in and out of your trades very, very quickly if need be. Now, I understand we glossed through the scan tab very quickly, so if you missed anything, please rewatch the video. And I also know that we only covered a few of the actual scan filters inside of here, but with hundreds of them out there, it is gonna take a little bit of work on your part to find those ones that are actually important to you. These scan filters can be a lifesaver, so I definitely recommend you set them up whenever you get a chance. And then, like I showed you before, save them and create a watch list so that you can just keep track of them on that left-hand side panel. For those of you who have watched a few of my videos now, I really appreciate the support. If you haven't yet already, please like this video and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. If there are any other video topics you'd like me to cover or any other tools inside of Thinkorswim that you still have questions on, please leave a comment down below and I will be sure to uh, make a video on it whenever I get a chance. Uh, but otherwise, I will see you on the next video. Have a great rest of your week.